Even after the scientific community had determined that DNA was a heritable material for cells, they were still plagued with a question. How does it replicate? When asking this question, many scientists looked at three different models. There was the conservative model, there is the semi-conservative, and there is the dispersive. In conservative replication, the original strand of DNA serves as a template for a new strand of DNA, but the original strand is completely conserved and the new strand of DNA is completely separate. In semi-conservative replication, a DNA strand splits in half and each strand from the original strand serves as a template for a new strand of DNA. Thus, we have two molecules of DNA, each somewhat conserving the original strand of DNA. In dispersive replication, there is no conservation, and thus DNA is split up into a bunch of fragments, and those are replicated and they are ligated back together. In order to determine which one of these mechanisms for DNA replication was the most correct, Meselson and Stahl conducted an experiment using two different isotopes of nitrogen, nitrogen 15 and nitrogen 14. For the purposes of this experiment, the heavy isotope will be shown in blue and the light isotope will be shown in orange. In the Meselson Stahl experiment, cells were initially cultured on a heavy isotope 15 in media. After these cells had developed DNA with only this 15 in nitrogen, they were then moved to 14 in cultures. That is, they were fed medium that had this lighter isotope of nitrogen. As they underwent subsequent rounds of DNA replication, DNA from some of the cells was extracted in a light and was put in a centrifugation to actually look at the different weights of the bands to establish which type of replication had occurred. Thus, they were able to track whether DNA was heavy, light, or a mix of the two when they were centrifuged down. Let's first look at Meslison and Stahl's theorized version of the conservative replication in their experiment. So the original or the parental strand of DNA would have been sitting here at the 15N level when centrifuged. However, after a single replication, we would see a band form at 15, as before, but also another band up at 14. After subsequent replications, we would see roughly the same pattern over and over with the conservative replication. The only difference is that the original band would be significantly less thick. With dispersive replication, again, the parental strand would have a single band at the 15 level. However, after a single replication, we would see that there would be a band of both. Because if we remember before, it's almost like we cut everything up and we pasted it back together with dispersive replication. After two replications, we would see just about the same thing with two bands again, but the only thing is with dispersive replication, we're kind of moving up the container because we still have some of that 15 in medium in there, but with each subsequent replication on the 14 in medium, we're adding more and more and more of the 14. So the molecular weight of this DNA of each strand is getting lighter and lighter. So after 50-ish rounds of replication, we would expect our band to be pretty close or at least moving up towards that 14. Finally, there is semi-conservative replication. Semi-conservative, I'll spoil it now, was what they determined to be the actual mode of replication used by cells. So the first band is very similar to dispersive replication where there is a band with both after the first replication. However, where we start to see difference is after the second replication because after the second replication, we have a round of the 14N media DNA that is acting as a template. So we have a difference between our 15-14 hybrid seen here and our distinct 14. So over time, after many replications, let's just say 50, that 15-14 band is not going to change. And we're going to have a big band at 14, as we saw in conservative. So to recap the experiment, we had groups of cells raised initially on 15 in media, which gave us this group right here, which were then transferred to 14 in media. When they actually conducted a test, the experimental results 
matched what they predicted the results for semi-conservative replication to be. Thus, in living cells, the only type of replication that we'll actually see is semi-conservative replication. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.